Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to address uh, how to buy a house with no money down. Now, let me clarify, that does not mean you don't have money. It means you don't tie it up in an unnecessary down payment, making it illiquid. In this episode, you're gonna be blown away. I have purchased many homes in my life and constructed them. I've bought many properties. I have never paid a down payment out of my pocket. I've satisfied down payments, but never with my money. There are many ways to do that. I have shared them in my books. In this episode, I'm gonna give you an actual example. And I taught my children, my two sons, my four daughters, I've taught thousands of people how to do this. You have to think out of the box. So you are ready to take a little journey with me and see how you can buy a house with no money down? Let's go. I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist for four and a half decades. I've helped many, many people understand how to optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes and empower their true or authentic wealth. But this one concept has liberated literally hundreds of thousands of people when I showed them how to buy a house or any uh, piece of real estate with no money down out of their pocket. So I mentioned that uh, I've never paid a down payment. I've satisfied down payments, but I don't ever want to tie up my capital in the property. In my first book, Missed Fortune, and I titled it that because of the fortunes people miss out on because they simply don't know what they don't know because you can't be aware of something you're not aware of. In that book, I have one chapter dedicated on how to buy a house with no money down. I think there's five examples in there of how I actually did it. As I was uh, editing that book, clear back at the turn of the century, uh, my sons, uh, Emron and Aaron, they're about 19 months apart, and they had been gone for a couple of years uh, serving humanitarian and religious missions. And they came back and it was a post 9-11 world, 2001. And uh, they were he helping me edit my book, Missed Fortune, which became a bestseller. And it was the first one and it got the attention of Time Warner and they commissioned me to write several more. And uh, they said, Dad, in a recession like this, uh, can you still buy a house with no money down? And I said, let me share one of my favorite quotes from my friend, Richard Rossi. When there's anxiety, there's opportunity. Did you hear that? I said, it's never been easier to buy a house with no money down and no credit than in a recession. Now people say, huh, how do you do that? The secret generally is to create a win-win for the seller, you, the buyer. Okay. And so I'm going to simplify this, but you satisfy the down payment in one of several different ways. We were in Maui on a family vacation with a purpose. And I said, okay, because I always have my kids withdraw wisdom. It's our family bank. And so they're saying, dad, how do you buy a house with no money down and no credit? We've been gone for two years. We don't have any credit. We don't. I said, no problem. Let me show you. So I, I told them to go out because they were newlyweds. Uh, both of my sons had just uh, been married. And I said, I want you to go out the next few weekends in neighborhoods that you think you would like to live in and find homes uh, that are for sale by owner. Find the ones where they're no longer living in the house. They've already moved to a new house. What does that tell you? Now, most people go, um, they're motivated. Uh, they're, they're desperate. No, it doesn't. What does it tell you if they have their house for sale by owner and they've already moved? Most people go, I don't know. What does it tell you? That they don't need the equity out of this house to buy a new one. They've already bought the new one. See, that's a big hurdle. Most people think, oh, I sell my house. I need the equity to pay a down payment or to lower the, the house payment when I buy a new one. If they're already in their new house, they don't need the money out of this house to buy their next house. That is incredible to know. So they came back in a couple of weeks and uh, my uh, son, Amron, he had a list of 30 homes that met that criteria in different neighborhoods. We didn't even get to the second home on the list uh, before we bought a home 
with no money down and no credit in less than five minutes. You want to see a glimpse of how we did it? So watch how we did this. We invited this couple selling their house to come into our offices and they sat down and basically the conversation went like this. They came to us, we didn't have to go to them because they had their house, this was back in the year 2000, and it was a nice three bedroom house with a, with a finished basement. And um, they had their house listed for uh, $160,000, okay? Now today, that would be double that or more, but it was a really nice home. And uh, they had two other offers on it uh, at that moment. They had somebody who offered them, I, I think it was $156,000, and the other one offered uh, 158 because it was a market where people are always making a little bit lower offer. And I told my son, I said, offer them 162. <laughs> More than their asking price? Why? To get their attention. They'll come to us. <laughs> so we, we offered them uh, uh, 162. Sure enough, they go, they came in and I said, first of all, any questions? And they go, uh, yeah, how come you offered us more than our asking price. <laughs> I said, we thought you would ask that. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Sure, go ahead. And I go, you are in your new home, yes, and you don't need the equity out of this house to buy your new home, do you? No. Would you mind telling us how much you owe on this house? And they said, uh, yeah, we owe about 120,000. So they owed 120,000. So what did they have? 40,000 of equity, but they didn't need that to buy their next home. I said, so you owe 120 and you're selling up for 160. What is this 40,000 of equity earmarked for? They said, well, we thought we would put that into a savings account for our, uh, two, our son and daughter's college education fund. I said, oh, how old are they? Oh, uh, one is 10 and one is 12 years old. So they're gonna need this money in about seven years, right? Yeah, so where are you gonna earn uh, some safe interest on that? Probably a bank or credit union. Oh. They're only paying like 1%. So I calculated at 1% interest, this 40,000 in seven or eight years when their son and daughter was gonna to go to college, uh, if they were lucky, might only be worth 44,000 or so. Maybe not even that, maybe 42 or 43,000, do the math. I said, how would you like to earn, we said something like 7.2% instead of one. Instead of 1%, how would you like to earn a seven or seven and a half percent? Where can we do that? Well, you could actually do it in a safer place than the bank or credit union if you knew what I know. Where is that? Well, see, banks and credit unions, uh, they often loan money for mortgages. You loan them your money and they pay you 1% on this college fund. And what are they going to do with your money? They're going to turn around and loan it out to somebody on a mortgage at 5, 6 or 7%. Uh, we just cut out the middleman here. See, one of the safest investments is a mortgage contract. So my son will set up a contract and buy this house and he will make the payments with an escrow on your $120,000 mortgage. We'll cover that. And on this other 40,000, he'll pay you monthly interest if you want, but if you want it to compound and grow, he'll credit you seven and a half percent interest on this 40,000 right here. And it'll be worth 65, it actually was gonna be worth about 70,000. What would you rather have for your kid's college fund in seven or eight years, 70 grand or like 43,000? I would rather have the 70. It's secured with your house. You're very familiar with the asset. If he defaults, you get the house back and you know this house is going to be worth more money in the next seven years, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah, this will go up in value. Done. In five minutes, they agreed to let my son credit them with seven and a half percent interest on the equity. And he simply set up an arrangement to pay the payments on the $120,000 mortgage. He moved into that home within a few days, no money down, no credit checks. Guess what happened? This house increased in value to about 230,000 within five years. My son goes in and now does a cash out refinance at 75% loan to value. He's able to mortgage the entire amount, the 120 plus the 70, he's up to 190,000. And he now just starts making a, uh, a house payment on that house and they got their money. In fact, they begged, don't pay us off. Please, please don't pay us off. Can't we just keep our college fund growing with you at seven and a half? We said, well, we have a, a place where you could put it and earn seven and a half 
tax-free. It's called the laser fund. Let us show you how that works. And so they were able to take the 70000 that they got when my son refinanced and put it into a laser fund, and they kept earning 7.5% tax-free. Folks, we've done this many, many times. I have had many situations where I simply ask, so what are you going to do with the equity if I cash you out? Oh, I don't know. I've got to figure out where to put it. Are you going to put it in the bank at 1%? Let's bypass the middleman. Your house is a very good asset. Why don't you just uh, earn the interest that the bank is earning on your money when you give it to them at one, they're earning seven. Let's just bypass them and I'll pay you the seven that I would pay a mortgage company. Done. Now it's that simple folks. And both my sons bought homes with no money down and I've helped thousands of people to do this. It all starts with a conversation. You don't have to borrow money from a lender every time. You simply create a win-win. This was a win for them. It was a win for my son. Everybody's happy. So I hope you got a little aha with that. If uh, that made sense, you ought to read a ton of other stories of how we've been able to buy houses with no money down and no credit because you sort of have to think out of the box. This is one of the best ways to understand how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So click on this episode and watch it and then you'll have the opportunity to obtain a free copy of my latest book, The Laser Fund, to be able to learn about other examples and stories to empower you.